my name's Nancy Odafona and I am an artist working in like mixed media. Yeah, so I think that like what with lockdown it allowed me to think about my work a bit more and take a step back and like reflect more on kind of the practice that I like to continue and um, think about my past work and where I'd like to go. So for example, um, working slower um, at a slower pace um, and really like focusing on subjects and objects and like allowing my thinking to take control and seeing how that progresses um, rather than kind of feeling like you have to rush or um, yeah it slowed everything down which I think is actually really helpful. Luckily during lockdown I was asked by Becky Beasley to t be part of her Instagram takeover so she did this thing called um, autumn takeovers and it was kind of um, celebrating artists um, alongside um, Black Lives Matter um, so she selected or you got in touch either way it didn't really matter um, to be to be mentored with her and then also to deliver this Instagram takeover and I thought that was an amazing opportunity and a really great experience to kind of be in someone else's bubble as it were and like takes away from yourself and suddenly you you concentrate solely on your, your work and what you deliver and yeah I thought that was really great um, to do. Yeah I think that um, having so working with Common Clay has been really amazing because it meant that I met I've met a lot of people through that so um, because lots of people would come and do a workshop and you'd be concentrating on your own personal private thing and but you'd be in a room working with other people and they would be doing exactly the same thing and it's it that was really that was probably the nicest experience of being in a Hastings and really thinking about my work um because you're self-conscious when you first share work um and you're, and you're like placed in a room and you're all making stuff and you're like, oh, what's they doing? Oh, what, what are they doing? And and then and then after you forget about those and it doesn't really matter anymore. So and then and then because of that initial awkwardness, you it's not awkward anymore. Um, I think that it's really important to be mentored after you graduate. I think that there's not necessarily um, that's not really there as much um it takes quite a long time i think personally i struggled with um finishing university and then not knowing what to do with myself and with my work and where to put it um it takes a lot longer time to reconnect um and understand a different community and network within a different area that you're in so i studied in london so i kind of had um, a network there but I couldn't necessarily afford to live in London and plus my parents lived at home so I came home and I think it's taken me kind of like four years to really come like become part of to feel comfortable with showing my work and like making work in Hastings type thing. Hastings has got a really strong community of artists and actually everyone's willing to help and support each other and um, there's always exhibitions on and it's very, um, it's constantly changing and I think that's a really great atmosphere in terms of support from um, local artists but also art artists that come or visitors that come to Hastings and then go away and yeah it's nice, there's a nice environment I guess. I guess I draw my inspiration from looking at things so just observing and um, I kind of, and the home and or repetition of uh, I kind of before when I was when I was studying I was looking at like performance and um, the audience and how you use a space and um, that's kind of always been there even though now I don't perform um, as such I haven't done it for a while um, but I'm still looking at the same thing so the space and the relationship between objects and how they, um, the language that they are about and what 
how an idea can grow and pr- move forward and transition and um, also one of the things that I really like and it's not necessarily a, about a theme or something is just playing um, playing that's something that I've almost relearn um, playing through materials trying to understand materials and I started ceramics with common clay in Hastings and did an artist residency there maybe like a year ago or a couple of years ago and at the same time I was also trying I also did art therapy which was basically and they happen like coincide they happen together um, and it was really interesting to do art therapy where you're drawing in response to your thoughts and feelings and you're not really talking about those things you're just visualizing them and then being able to take those kind of 2d drawings and sketches and with crayons onto like a ceramic surface and they actually started to transfer um, and I thought that was quite an interesting way and I really enjoyed just the idea of playing with material and letting yourself play learning a whole new skill um, and it's quite um, a fun messy like procedure as it were or medium to work with so you get messy and then you have to wait and um, it's exciting and it's kind of uh, nerve wracking in a weird way like you put you don't know what colours are going to turn out like and you put it into the kiln and it could break and there's all these risks that you're taking whilst you're making it and you have to go with with the process and I enjoyed that as a process. I would like to hopefully um, be a practicing artist that and be teaching at university level and being able to have time to really push my work and influence and um, help and inspire young people to push their art forward and seeing uh, the ability that it's possible to be an established artist um, in order to encourage like younger generations to keep making. Um, it's very hard but I think it's not an impossible thing to do. Art has always been like a big part of my childhood. My mum used to take me to like the National the- uh, National Gallery, uh, Portrait Gallery and I used to do workshops when I was little um, in the summer holidays and we'd go, me and my brother and my mum, and we'd spend like the day playing and making stuff and seeing all these amazing pieces of work and so I kind of necess- I kind of it almost like feels comfortable, feels like home, if that makes sense. Um, it makes me feel safe, uh, and I like, and it also is. It's a really I don't know being in these rooms full of art. Um, it's inspiring and it takes you off to imaginary worlds and playing and seeing different things. And I I I like that the fantasy aspect of you know, enchantment, as it were. I was really interested in pushing pushing myself as an artist and putting myself in really, in situations that would make me feel uncomfortable um, and seeing how I navigated that situation. That's what I was doing when I was studying. Um, just kind of testing my own boundaries, as it were. Really difficult for young people, particularly, to show their work to have a space to which provides them an an area to to just explore and then let them show and share um i think that's hard to ed- anywhere really um i think the flatlands are doing great um in terms of allowing that to happen and obviously there's like systems in place where you have to apply and um, I guess they get in touch with other artists that they're interested in that's quite cool and there's a few other projects that are happening in Hastings um, that are allowing uh, artists to to show their work publicly um, without having to be really expensive or for them to be really established. It's just more about like the work itself, which I think is actually the most important thing, really. Um, without those, I think that it makes it difficult to produce art and to, to see it um, in a serious kind of, not serious as in like, I make art and this is really serious, but um, it, 
to let yourself keep making. I think that's really difficult, especially if you've studied art, you're given a space, you're given gallery spaces to show your work and you're taught to take it seriously and like present it and you know do all of these things that put in place they're put in place that you that's something that can happen and actually it it's not that it can't but it's just much harder to because you have to start back again wherever you are so you always have to start up again um re-establish yourself and then keep going and it just takes a little bit longer to get there unless you just unless from uni you went straight to work being seen and a collector asking for your work that can happen but I think it's really difficult um it's almost impossible um very rare that that does take place but which is a shame so I think that having these kind of local smaller independently run galleries I think that's why they are there um to allow that to happen um, and most of the time I think it's m- more to do with the students, ex-students, who have probably not been able to get their work in a gallery space. They think, oh, OK, why why is this not possible? Why is it not viable? How do we get there? Is it because I have to have a lot of money to be able to produce work to the quality and standards that allows people, collectors, to see my work and take it seriously and go, oh, actually, I like that. Um, most students, ex-students don't have that kind of money. So um, I think that what happens is young people then create a space. They create those environments to allow other students to not have to do that, to have to go through those difficulties um, and to have that platform that's available. I think that's really incredible. Yeah. I mean... No, you don't have to show your work in a gallery. There, there is, there's a whole movement about being able to show your work in an open space without walls away, like not within the white cube. There's land art, like there's practice which isn't gallery related. However, um, some work do, like they do actually need a white space to be able to function, to be able to be seen. Um, to be stripped back away from distraction in order to focus on the work itself. Um, Having that room and environment that sets up um, a piece, I think you see it differently. It allows you as a viewer and you as the artist to suddenly see the work rather than the stuff around the work. Maybe as an artist you can make work in any room um, you can make it in your bedroom, um, but you can't necessarily show it in your bedroom. So there's lots of distractions, like how do you photograph a piece of work? How do you place it? What if you don't work in where there's lots of light in your space? But you, a gallery space allows for those things that maybe you wouldn't necessarily be able to afford um, to be there and allow your work to be viewed as the work. I've tried. I found Instagram or I found it quite difficult. I find Instagram quite hard personally because um, I don't know necessarily if it's a good platform to be stuck on your phone all the time to it's I think it quite it can be it can be a great place but it can also have so many negative things and it's I find it quite hard in terms of thinking about likes thinking about followings it becomes very much about your love hearts that you get and what number that equates to and I don't necessarily think that that's really what it should be used for so it might be the mindset that you're in um it's really easy to fall into that kind of like space where you become very um vulnerable or self-conscious and I haven't really shown my work online not necessarily I don't have like an art page um where I just stored all my work or but I put pieces in and then working with Becky for this Instagram takeover it's actually the first time I've really had to concentrate and think okay let's see what my work looks like online um what do I what do I want to give out to the world like what do I want to show I had one experience when I was um, really young. 
and I did a I went to like a stage coach not stage coach but kind of like a performance group where you did like singing acting dancing and we had this one show and in it I decided to do a solo piece and I sang Spice Girls and I forgot all of my lines and it was horrible and I hated it and then the audience because it was Spice Girls and everyone knows the Spice Girls um sang with me and like helped me and then and then I was like oh okay I can do this and then after the and then I did it and then afterwards I cried loads um because I was kind of like traumatized um but that's always in my head whenever I go to perform or do something I'm like you can do it you just have to get past that first initial fear and also the fear is the thing that allows you to want to do it you're kind of led with the fear like okay you can do this you can do this you can do this and then you just take some deep breaths so it's something I've always thought about and initially I thought about making work about my race and my heritage but um, I hadn't I haven't made work about race before um, it with the with the work that I did for Becky's work and during lockdown it influenced it because it was f from that space so it was talking about, I it was about supporting young black artists and so I came in it with that mentality and thinking about okay maybe this is an opportunity where I can really question my race and start exploring those ideas and and I had those those questions in my mind when I was making the work but it didn't necessarily translate as work by a black artist I also don't necessarily want to I don't know like I think that for me, I've never really thought about my race being my identity. It doesn't, I I've, I've, I feel quite strongly about it not being that. Um, the same with being a woman. Um, I, I feel like I'm a person and this is my art and this is what I make. And um, I, don't, I don't necessarily want those two things to be the sole reason why I'm an artist. So, yeah, but it influences it because it has to, but um, not so much that it's about those subjects, for me anyway. Um, I mean, I'm going to go back to the Instagram takeover because it's the most current thing that I've done. And um, one of my, even though that wasn't performance, it was image based and video based. Um, one of the things I had a problem with halfway through the week was the interaction with the audience, um, knowing what they were thinking, if how they were responding to the work. Maybe if you had a show, you'd talk to, it's not performance, but you would have your pieces up um, and you'd go around and you'd talk to people and you'd explain a bit of work to them. And yes, you can do that in text and but it's not the same, You're not your voice isn't necessarily there. Um, and so suddenly it feels like an, you are isolated in this kind of space. And even though there is an audience and they are watching um, or participating by viewing it, it felt very strange to not have an interaction with somebody or with people. So for me, what I did is I set up little videos kind of like Instagram stories, um, which I hadn't intended to do before um, because I felt there was a lack of interaction. And even though they weren't speaking to me, I was talking to them. Just being able to put my voice near my work felt, I felt better. I felt like it all kind of fitted together a bit more. And so Yes, I think that it's going to be very hard if you were to do performance art and not have an audience. But I think that there are ways that you would be able to create that audience. So, for example, if you did have a and a you would then open it up for an audience of people to ask you questions, to respond to questions. And maybe those areas are more important to think about and interactions. So if you're doing Instagram, you might want to do ask questions and they would respond to your questions and that would be an area that you would include in the performance 
not secondary but as well as um for performance artists that's what i think like you do need that relationship it is true um it's just about navigating it um putting out questions seeing if seeing what the response is if something doesn't feel right like using your gut instinct and being like okay yeah i need i i'm missing something from this um this is this isn't this is different this is strange and how do i deal with this like new normal this bizarre environment um that doesn't feel quite the same as it used to um we're all on our phones though so it's not like yes do we need an audience we have an audience this we just look at it on our phones it's just take it's just using that as a tool rather than as a phone actually most phones are pretty good so <laughs> i think you'll be fine <laughs> but yeah have fun and don't be scared the virtual world has to be important because it's the world that we have so regardless as to whether you would like it to be or not i think it genuinely is um technology is taking over so like you kind of have to work with it like we've all had to really dig into understanding new ways of communicating and trying to get through um isolation and lockdown and not being able to communicate in the way that we usually would um through, and using um technology as a way to be able to do that yes it it works but it's not necessarily it's not enough i don't think you do need like physical interaction i think the amount of like mental health issues that came about from um having this lockdown and being isolated and not being able to talk to people or see people like just the mere fact that you weren't able to see your friends even at a social distance level just that created so much anxiety within people um and so much stress and it and it was scary and it's really hard and so no i i think that they you know social media has a platform and it's really important but it's not but but you do need to interact um as humans we need to interact it's really important for our mental health that we talk and we have reassurance and you know just conversation um physical conversation kind of like seeing people's reaction i think yeah for our mental health yeah i think you need both you can also you need to be able to turn off social media you know switch it off put it away who cares the world doesn't care right now like and just focus on who you're with so yeah it's about juggling just having the opportunity to be mentored by Me becky was just was just amazing um just the fact that you i could have a moment where I get to got to like talk about my work and talk about my ideas but not just my ideas but like things that were worrying me before and um and just have that small that guidance um I think the thing that was so great about it is the fact that somebody took their the time out of their day um to just listen and to push you and say come on keep going you can do it which is quite nice and that's how for me um when i teach students i i have always thought about the fact that I, i want them to 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 keep going to um keep working and to not give up and um so it was just nice to have that for myself as well so i feel like you do pass it down like further down the line you're talking about generations of artists and um i think naturally like so i've been mentored by becky and i'm also a teach teach practicing i'm training at the moment um and my aim would be to like help and mentor other artists who are younger than me to like push their work forward and and i think it will just trickle down and then trickle back up because actually you can a younger person can also inspire and push you forward as well um so there's like a nice relationship and new way of thinking and fresh eyes that you can talk to someone who you might not have spoken to about your work before um 
which makes you really like reevaluate what you're doing um, and why you're doing it. These ones are from uh, the Instagram takeover that I did, um, and they are um, inspired by the vessel, like the alchemy vessel. Um, I was looking at isolation and during lockdown, and I was thinking about uh, I'd like come across some an artist on isolation station talking about the alchemy vessel, and so from there I was kind of just really interested in what the alchemy vessel is and this idea of transformation and um, something happening in the centre of this vessel and then, you know, the purification of that and what you put in and what comes out and um, how that relates to being in isolation and suddenly having to look more inwardly or how you want to, how you might come out of it um, kind of where do I want to go next? And then I was looking at the amphora, which is a um, Greek terracotta pot, which they usually use for like wine and transporting items or goods, um, and just looking at those two shapes. So this work came from that. Um, and initially it was to do with, so I was making these little tiny objects. I don't know if you can see them. So they're like that. So, um, and I'd made like little miniature vessels trying to figure out the shape of them and trying to understand it. So initially, if you were to think about the vessel would be kind of more like this, I guess. So it'd be like a rounded shape. Um, I couldn't do that in ceramics because I didn't have the, the equipment to be able to really create those into larger forms so um, I worked with 2D forms so then um, so basically at the moment what I'm thinking about is taking these these shapes and then they'll be like framed so they will be flat shapes but they can also change into so what am I trying to say so the 3D form is what how I initially started and then I worked on them and I'd created flat ones so these would be like framed pieces um, and then I'm thinking about next still going on on the journey of like transformation and how one idea can follow through and create something completely different is um, these kind of 3D wooden sculptures and the idea is that I, this is just a uh, my demo mock-up version and I quite like it's you know um, the airiness that it has um, the way that the shadows fall so I'd be looking at the silhouette and shadows and form um, and then potentially what they would be is either 3d wood versions or I might try making them into ceramics so they would all be made of ceramics, um, quite similar to these pieces. So if I were to take um, like these shapes and this kind of thickness of the clay uh, and then interlock them like that wooden one and then play with colour and shadow and uh, negative and positive space is kind of what I'm thinking about, um, which is very different to the work that I made for the lockdown piece. Um, that was more to do with the alchemy vessel, to do with transformation, to do with um, um, 2D objects, 3D objects. Um, and this is more to do with form, same 3D objects, but form and colour, space. This piece I did at Common Clay. Um, so this was the, I think this was my first piece that I made. And I was looking at um, kind of, this, this is the piece I made in response to my art therapy um, drawings that I did. Um, and they were to do with kind of transform a transformation again, strangely enough. Um, a, ju a journey, um, thinking about like um, creating a little kingdom. But it gave way to the idea of playing and in the enjoyment of play without taking it too seriously um, and without thinking that 
this is a piece of art. That wasn't a piece of art, that was me making for the sake of making and enjoying that process. Um, because I think that sometimes you can get caught up in the idea of I'm making a piece of art and therefore it has to be perfect and it has to have these rules and um, it's not going to be good enough for me to make or for me to present or for me to continue with those trains of thoughts. Um, and, it, and I've had to really like teach myself to not do those things naturally, to not be so self-critical um, and to not shut down ideas before they've even started. Um, and so with the Common Clay piece, or residency, it was an opportunity to let myself just let ideas come through and really look at this new way of making and way of thinking, um, which has led me to making the 2D work and potentially moving on to these like more 3D pieces that kind of will, you know, kind of sit very closely to the ceramics. So I feel like you do pass it down like further down the line. You're talking about generations of artists and um, I think naturally like, so I've been mentored by Becky and I'm also a te teach practicing, I'm training at the moment. Um, and my aim would be to like help and mentor other artists who are younger than me to like push their work forward and and I think it will just trickle down and then trickle back up because actually you can a younger person can also inspire and push you forward as well um, so there's like a nice relationship and new way of thinking and fresh eyes that you can talk to someone who you might not have spoken to about your work before um, which makes you really like Reevaluate what you're doing um, and why you're doing it. Yeah, it's been great.